Hey, this is Jared, Jared Hasloff, and apparently I am about to be interviewed by Ornella, and you'll be watching it on Comeback Stage. Okay. All right, so Ornella, what, what should we talk about? Hi, Jared. Well, tell me, how you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, I, I kind of thought this interview was going to take place earlier, so I was planning on doing it completely nocturne, but well, my buddy's band was playing. Uh, you can't tell this. I mean, maybe you can tell by the uh, <coughs> decor here, but we're backstage at a bar, and my buddy's band was playing, and I kind of hoped I would get the interview out of the way before. <laughs> it turned out I fucked around at home a little bit, got here a little bit late, and so now we're going to have to do it after, and I've had... You might not be able to tell this, but I have had a couple of cocktails. Oh. I'm thinking about making an invention just like that. But I think it would be great for you know, police, which I think is why I'll sell a lot of them. It's That's a microphone. It. Mm -hmm. You talk into it, and it's got a breathalyzer built into it. So you go up to yeah. somebody, and like when they're talking yeah. to you, it you know it turns out like, oh, that's how drunk you are. Shit, yes. Yeah. So um, let's get to the music sector. Does the Bloodhound Gang still exist or not? Well, good, good question. I have no idea. Thank you. Uh, no idea. I mean, we haven't played a show since 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we never officially broke up. Yeah. It's just, you know, we kind of stopped playing. So. You used to sell, like, millions of records. Why did you stop playing and touring? What happened in uh, Russia, which you can find if you, you, know, if you Google it okay. a little bit, I mean, it was a pretty big news story. I mean, I know this is going to show mostly in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty sure it was in the like the Bild Zeitung, yeah, and okay. but I know it was in Time Magazine in America, so it was yeah, yeah. you know pretty big. Uh, but suffice it to say, whatever happened there was kind of my fault, mm -hmm. and I think the rest of the guys in the band are still a little bit pissed at me because <laughs> you know I did something kind of dumb and it got us okay. into a lot of trouble. And um, do you still make music? And if not, do you miss like being in a band? You know, that is that's stuff for kids. You know, when I was 20 or 30, that was the kind of shit I wanted to do. But I you know, fucking I'm almost 50 now. You know, I, I, I'm not Keith Richards. I'm not going to go out and fucking <laughs> live on a bus for two months at a stretch yeah. and play shows every night. So you know, if it came up that there were a couple of festivals or something to do and maybe some some club shows to fill in in between. Yeah. I might do it, but I'm not going to go on, on back on the road okay. and do the like the kind of shit we used to do in our 20s and in our 30s. You know, we would go out and you know we would play like 200 shows a year. Well, and you know the blood, you know, the bloodhound gang. We're a band that, or we were a band that we like to party a little bit. So <laughs> you know, it's I know I wouldn't want to go out and see a band that is totally sober on stage. Yeah. And I think like when you're a little bit tipsy, the the crowd has a better time. So we used to like drink a lot mm -hmm. on stage you know and then you have like the like a meet and greet after the show normally and so you drink a little bit there and then you have the after show party <laughs> a little bit there and then you have the after after party and then the real party yeah. starts like when all the fans and shit leave and the the bus is packed up and you're sitting in the front lounge of the bus mm -hmm. passing around a bottle of vodka like that's <laughs> that's what i like Good look, times. yeah that was the real Party. I mean, sure, the, the, the being on stage is fine. The after show yeah. party is fine. But like the best part of being on tour is sitting in the front lounge of that bus and passing around a bottle of vodka and getting totally shit house with your buddies. <laughs> and, you know, I could do that maybe once a week now, yeah. not fucking like 30 times a month like yeah, we used to. Imagine. But um, as you mentioned, I mean, you were a band that were like very disruptive. You had um, a lot of shit going on on stage, which, which was actually pretty crazy and cool. Bands nowadays don't seem to do this like quite much why do you think this is the fact i, I don't know i mean I, I don't know that a lot of bands did that when we were doing it but i wanted it to be like every and when we started out it was you know before you really had the the internet and yeah. youtube and shit like that but then you know they came up with youtube and so every show like every asshole in the audience is fucking watching it through their phone yeah. you know which I don't get anyway, because like, why would you pay money yeah. to go in and watch a show and miss the live experience of the show just to give the thing you fucking paid for yeah. to a bunch of other assholes for free? It sucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if it sucks, it but sucks. It, do, it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense to me if I was some asshole in the audience and I just paid fifteen or twenty bucks to get yeah. into a show, I would watch the show, not fucking yeah. record it so I can give it to a bunch of other idiots for free. Yeah. But. Anyhow, we realized that, like, the internet was, was coming up and people were able, able to watch this shit on YouTube. And, like, if somebody watched our show in Cincinnati yeah. and then they went to the show in Cleveland and it's the same fucking show, 
I think they're going to like be a little bit pissed yeah. that we're doing the same, exact same fucking show. So what we would do is me and Jim and the lighting guy, whenever we would get into town, first thing we would do is grip up somebody that was local. Okay. And then we would just, you know, pump them for information. Like, uh, is there any like weird sex scandals in town? You know, <laughs> has the coach of the, the, the local, yeah. you know, football team ever been, uh, you know, arrested for pedophilia? You know, <laughs> is, the, is, there a, is there a politician in town yeah. that resembles a barnyard animal? Like we would just, you know, we'd have like a series of questions we would go through okay. to try and tailor the show. We would find out everything we could about the city we were in. It's quite much work. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, I figure these people are paying money to get yeah. into the show. Even if they're fucking giving it away to a bunch of idiots on the internet for free, they're still paying to get in the show. Yeah. So we should give them the best show that we can. You know, we're never going to be the best musicians in the world. We're never going to write the best songs in the world. But what we can try and do is put on the best live show. Yeah. So we would tailor all of our, our jokes and shit to the, the town that we were in and find something, you know, local about the time. Sometimes it would work. <laughs> Sometimes it would not work. <laughs> and sometimes it gets you in trouble. Um, no, the shit that got us in trouble was never was never anything <laughs> okay. like that. You know, normally the local people that we would talk to knew enough to like steer us away yeah, yeah. from shit that would really okay. get us in trouble. Okay, that's good. I was so Macedonia, one time. What uh, no, I refer to the crowd as a bunch of Serbs, and apparently, like, it was like two <laughs> years out from the civil war there, and oh. like, you know how sometimes, like, uh, um. People will wait for the band afterwards yeah. to get your autograph. No, they were waiting after the show with like baseball bats and two by fours with nails through them. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh. <laughs> so, um, what do you think is like the biggest challenge for a band nowadays who would like to make it big? And do you have an advice? Um, <laughs> you learn carpentry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's you know, it's not it's not like the old days. You can't fucking make any money in music anymore. You know, when when I was a kid. The, the chances that you would be able to start a band and, you know, make a decent amount of money, you know, it was pretty pretty good. I mean, we fucking started in my basement and we were able to become successful. But the chances that you could do that now in the era of casting shows, American Idol, DSDS, The Voice of Germany, yeah, shit like yeah. that, that's where the rock stars are coming from. And the chances that some asshole is going to start a band with his buddies mm -hmm. in his garage and be able to make a go of it. I'm not talking about to be able to be a rock star yeah. that's a household name. Just to be able to, to make enough money that when you come home from tour, that you don't have to go back and wait tables. Yeah. The chances that that will happen to you are right about exactly at one in a million. Mm. So, you know, can I say to someone trying to start a band, fucking buy a lottery ticket, you got just as good <laughs> of a chance. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, this is not, this is not a good time. To, I mean, this I is, know. if I was a musician, this is not the time I would want to grow up in. Are there some new bands you really like and uh, support or listen to? Um, God, it's tough. You know, you go out and you fucking, you, you go to like big festivals mm -hmm. and like who is still headlining big festivals? Like Red Hot Chili Pepper, yeah. The Offspring, Green Day. I mean, it's the same fucking bands, Metallica, same bands from 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no new bands coming up that are going to be able to, to take that, like the helmet. I mean, those guys are not the fucking Rolling Stones. I don't think oh, those guys are going to want to do it until they're 70. Yeah. I mean, the only new band that I've seen coming up that I think is really good is Volbeat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have, um, you know, it, it's not like the 80s where every week there were like 10 great new bands. It's like there's in the past 10 years, there's like one band that looks like it's going to be able to, 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 you know, take the helm and yeah, be able yeah. to headline festivals. And, you know, sooner or later, all the bands that are headlining festivals now, they're going to start, you know, the rock and roll guys. <laughs> they're going to start dying <laughs> off. They're going to start ODing, you know, fucked up shit's going to happen. And, you know, with no one there to replace him, I'm going to start seeing headlining at Rock on Ring, Justin Bieber. Oh, please, no. <laughs> oh, I hate to say it. This can't be happening. So, Jared, you're a lot on TV right now, like, challenging yourself and stuff. What do you like about the work with TV productions? Oh, um, well, I mean, it's there, right? It's yeah. like fucking, yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. But since the band isn't doing anything and... It just seems like the shit that I like to do is suited for being on TV. So I figured maybe, like, since they'll pay me to go on TV, maybe yeah. it's better. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe it's better for me to do that when the band's on hiatus yeah. than to go and, like, fix tractors or something. That's good. 
It's a good plan. Oh. <laughs> so uh, you're also living in Berlin. Why did you decide to live here in Berlin and not somewhere else in Germany or a completely different country? Oh, well, you know, th there's this club in Berlin. It's called the SO Sex and Dreizing. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been there. No. Nope. Yeah, rock club. It's on uh, Oranienstrasse. And I remember every time we used to come over here, like in the 90s, we would normally play this club. And I'm a hillbilly from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And what I'm used to is that bars close at two o'clock because in America, unless you're in New York, Miami, New Orleans or Las Vegas, mm -hmm. America at two o'clock is closed. At least as far as bars go. I mean, you can fucking go shopping at a Walmart yeah, yeah. 24 hours. A lot of the Walmarts don't even have fucking locks on the doors <laughs> because there's no reason to because the, the store never closes. Yeah. But if you're an alcoholic at two o'clock, you're cut off. Yeah. And like a lot of times we would get out of, of playing at like, like we, we'd wrap up with the crew and shit at like three in the morning. And then we could roll across the street to this bar over there called the Franken bar. Mm -hmm. And like three o'clock, it's just fucking getting going. <laughs> And, like, if we were playing close the next day, like, if we were playing in yeah. Dresden or Leipzig or yeah. Hamburg, they'd let us fucking stay in that bar until really? noon. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd come out. You live there. We would come out. It's not like the sun's starting to come up. Like, the sun's bright in the middle <laughs> of the sky. There's fucking guys on the street in suits, like, on their lunch break. And, like, we're coming out. <laughs> Where's the fucking bus? <laughs> and I was like, if I ever, ever decide I don't want to yeah. be hillbilly anymore, this is where I want to live. Okay. So that's how it happened all. Well, then <laughs> a, a couple years later, I, well, we have these guys in America called Mennonites. I don't know if you've heard of these guys. No. Uh, you heard of the Amish. Yeah. Okay. So the Mennonites are sort of like the Amish, but they don't have to ride horses and they're allowed to have TVs and shit. But okay. the one thing they're not allowed to have is this. Okay. And, and they think because they're not allowed to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. nobody should drink alcohol. Mm, that sucks. Right. Of course. So um, normally in Pennsylvania, and there's a lot of them in Pennsylvania, and like the township I grew up in is fucking full of them. And they, um, in that township, well, actually in all of Pennsylvania, for every 10,000 people that live in the state, whenever they do a census, you're allowed to have one bar or, okay. or, or, or club. or you, know, you can have one liquor license for every 10,000 yeah. residents. Normally, because they're quite expensive, like sixty or $70,000, mm -hmm. People will either save up their money, you know, from working for a bunch of years, or they will get together with their with their buddies and, you know, try and live out their dream, open up a bar or a club and, you know, make a go at it. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's the way it would normally go, unless you're a Mennonite, where they will take all the money from, like, the church collection plates, okay. buy these liquor licenses, no and put them in their underwear drawer. No way. So, in a township like mine, where there should be, by the residency, about... Yeah. I don't know, 20 or 30 clubs yeah. or bars, there's three. And I figure this has got to be fucking the Mennonites too yeah. because it's not like I can just walk on over to the corner and, and get drunk. Yeah. Like I have to drunk. I have no choice because the closest bar is 10 miles away and there's no taxi, there's no U-Bahn, there's no bus. Like the Nothing. only thing, yeah, you either find, <laughs> you know, a, a designated driver who will drive you out yeah. there or, you know, you come out of the bar, you look around, like, well, I don't see any cops, okay, so, yeah, so you go for it. <laughs> and, you know, maybe you get away with it, maybe you don't, you know, and the first time you get caught driving drunk, and it's just like Germany, it's like .08, so it's mm -hmm. not a lot of beers, it's like four or five beers for yeah. a guy my size. You know, you get caught first time, okay, you lose your license mm -hmm. for, I think, 30 days or 90 days, but, you know, when you lose your license, then you have to, you, you have to, First of all, you always have to get a lawyer. So that's like 5,000 bucks. Then you got another fine. Then normally you have to find some other way to get to work. Like my buddy mm -hmm. got, got the guy that lived with me mm -hmm. got busted driving my car drunk. Cause like we came over for a party. Really? Yeah, we came over for a party. And I was like, dude, we're too fucking drunk. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sleep right here. He's like, nah, dude, let me give, give me your keys. I can get us home. I'm like, all right, well, I'm like, are you drunk? He's like, yeah, no, no, I'm cool, dude, I'm cool, dude. Not at all. So, and we're way in the middle of fucking woods. There's nothing there but fucking okay. cornfields. And it's like three in the morning and we're driving home and like there's one other set of the lights on the road. And first it starts out as white and then it turns red and blue. I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> dude, you're fucked. Shit. And so, yeah, it's a fucking cop. And we're like, yeah. we're like 10 miles from anywhere. The cops pulls over. We're like, hey, what are you blowing to this? And he blows and like, Three times the legal limit. <laughs> He's well, like so okay. fucking drunk. So, and the cop's like, whose car is it? I'm like, yeah, it's mine. He's like, well, why aren't you driving? I'm like, because I'm drunk. 
<laughs> like, and you let your friend drive? I'm like, he said he wasn't drunk. He's like, well, you didn't question I'm like, what am I, you? I'm not a cop. <laughs> He's like, why do you blow into this? I'm like, why would I blow into that? I already told you I'm drunk. What, what do you think, I'm lying to you? <laughs> driving <laughs> you think I'm, oh, you think I'm really sober and I'm like oh yeah yeah I'm just saying I'm drunk sorry just kidding yeah so anyhow like the guy he was my roommate at the time yeah. and like he lost his license for I think it was it was maybe three months I don't know maybe he had a DUI before but I just remember he wasn't able to live in my house anymore because he couldn't <laughs> drive and he had to rent another apartment uh-huh. that was like by a train that he could take okay. so he could take the train to work at, at the end of the day, it ended up costing him 10000 bucks. So I'm sure you can edit this story down. But my point was that you know, I don't want to fucking lose my license. Yeah. I don't, and like the, the first time you lose your license, the second time, I think you lose your license for a year. Third time, you go into fucking jail. Really? Yeah. That's how it is? That's how it is. And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't want to lose 10000 bucks. Yeah. Second of all, I, I know I sure as fuck don't want to go to jail mm. uh, you know, for just you know, driving around after yeah. having a couple of beers. So I just wanted to live someplace that had taxis, buses, yeah. Uber, like a public transportation infrastructure. And, you know, I thought maybe, maybe I would do it for yeah. like, you know, three months out of the year. Mm. Go back, live in the fucking woods, do my normal shtick, yeah. ride motorcycles, shoot guns, blow shit up with dynamite. And then for a few <laughs> months out of the year, I would come and be some city asshole and go out to clubs mm-hmm. and get drunk and then take a taxi home. And, you know, we were on tour 2006. Mm-hmm. It was October 2006. And the tour ended in Munich. And when uh, when it was time to fly home, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm staying here. Really? So everybody else Who flew back that? to America. I burned my ticket. I bought a ticket on Air Berlin. Oh. I came up here. I checked into uh, the Rock and Roll Herberge yeah. in Kreuzberg. And I started looking for apartments. If you should convince a young person to listen to rock music, which song would you show him or her and why? Ace of Spades, Motorhead. Why? It's fucking great. <laughs> it is. Yeah, fucking genius. And if you could have like a fantasy dinner with three persons of your choice, it doesn't matter if alive or dead or whatever, who would you invite? Who's at your table? Ooh, I would think Terry Bradshaw, mm-hmm. William Shatner, and Steve McQueen. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Seem like cool guys, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, Jared, thank you very much for your time. The last words are yours. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I can I use this to advertise something? Sure. Because you know, I yeah. don't. Ju- I'm not just an alcoholic and a TV guy. I also make products, and I just saw one of mine over here. Okay. I, Go this, ahead. I, I, this is wasn't planned. I just saw that this. <laughs> they have this here. Go ahead. Wait a minute. What is this? Check it. This is my official beer pump. No way! Yeah. How cool yeah, is yeah. this? Got a, inside this thing is like a mat that rolls out and then a bunch of cups and some balls. How and cool. you just roll it out and then you can play. You can buy it on Amazon. No idea how you find it. Uh, Google. <laughs> Evil or... Jarrett's Beer Pong Sat. Yes, I, would, I, would, I would put that in the search <laughs> engine and you can do it. Those are my last words because I am a shameless sales whore. <laughs>